everybody, and welcome to another Indie Film Cafe monthly movie haul, where we go out and buy tons and tons of movies because we are collector nerds. Hey, you didn't say movie on the I last mean. one. Well, this is your old pal, the Moo Cow, a.k.a. Paul A. Persenza, and I am joined by my cohorts in crime, including... Jonathan A. Moody. And... Uh, John Moo Ward. There you go. I knew everybody's got to got to figure out some way to get that moo in there. I'm just lucky that my last. I I wonder why. I, I wondered if that was why Paul became friends with me is because my last name has moo in the, in the title. <laughs> in the title. Uh, I think it was all because we both were friends with April. Yeah, and then we all and we all we bonded over stinky movies and right, stuff. Right, so that right. was up. All right. <laughs> so the way this works is we do five Blu-rays each. And then two sets of 10 DVDs. Because otherwise we'll be here forever. Yeah. Because okay. I have a lot. And this month, I'm going first. So first up are the Blu-rays. And um, as some of you guys might know, I have a show uh, that we do on occasion called Blue Cheese, where we do... <laughs> haven't done in movies. a while. we got to get yeah. that going. Stinky movies on Blu-ray. So I got a couple movies for that, including... Dracula Untold. Nice. I if that's like a blue cheese. Like, that's actually, that was a Hollywood movie, buddy. Shouldn't it yeah. be called Moo Cheese? Nah. I think so. Well, the cheese comes from cows. So there you go. Huh? <laughs> Works. Next one, which I've actually heard pretty good things about, so we'll have to see where this goes, but it is Luciferina. Oh, so she's is... Lucifer, you know, woman? Okay. A woman yep, Lucifer? Yep, yep. Cool. So so it's a woke version of Luf- Lucifer, in other words. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I mean, uh, just mm-hmm. because a woman is the, the lead does not make it necessarily a woke. Give her a different name, name then. And also that Dracula Untold is technically the first of those, uh, that universal world that yeah. they wanted to start. So, but we're they tried. Um, the they next trying two, to, yeah. I'm pretty sure you've heard of. Um, this was at the dollar store, believe it or not, and it is Lizzie. Is it like Chloe a Lizzie Sav- Borden? Yeah, with Chloe Savigny and Kristen huh. Stewart. Nice. <clears throat> okay, I watch that. I don't. I watch anything with Chloe. Well, I love Chloe Savigny. I can't stand Kristen Stewart, but I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. And we'll Kristen Stewart was so good when she was a child. Like I really, really loved her in Panic Room. You know, so. And then she sort but of became who she thing, is, the Twilight Girl. So I, I, I will disagree with this. Okay, so uh, same thing with the next one. This is one that uh, you guys probably know. It's got some famous folks, but it's the movie Beirut. Mm-hmm. With Heard John of it, yeah. Ham and Rosamund Pike, also certified at, fresh, also at the dollar store. And then finally, uh, Mr. Moody knows all about this one. This is my signed copy of Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Oh wow! Well, there signed you go. by, signed by. Oh, um, uh, gosh, what's his name? <laughs> oh, Greg Sestero. Greg Sestero. Yes. Not if it's offended. <laughs> I'm not offended. I'm just. By the way, that will not. <gasps> my copy of a movie that I got there will be in Blu-ray Hunter. So check that out. But uh, I've just got too much, too many Blu-rays to to to. You know, we only do five. So. Jag, you're it. Uh, it's actually John. That's it. Okay. Um, so my first one here, these are all Dollar Tree Blu-rays, um, is Antarctic. Nice. I saw that and there, too. That, that uh, stars uh, Hannibal Lecter in it, and it is uh, certified fresh. Anthony Hopkins <laughs> is in it? Uh, the other version of, An- of Hannibal Lecter. Uh, I was just teasing you guys. I was pretty sure Han- uh Anthony Hopkins wasn't in that movie. <laughs> How do you know? He may be, maybe he has like a cameo. Dude, wouldn't that be great to get all the Hannibals together? And that's the Arctic that doesn't have the ants in it. Antarctic with ants? Antarctic. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm out of here. I'm gone. <laughs> He's done. Um, yeah, I'm finished. Uh, next one is uh, Intruders. Nice. Bowen. Alien flick. Like that one. Um, and then this one has, speaking of cannibals, this has our favorite cannibal in it. 
Um, and it's the hotel, uh, I think it's Mumbai. Oh, Mumbai, Hotel Mumbai. Mumbai, yeah. What's the, who's the who's favorite cannibal? Bombay? Um, Army Hammer, he's a cannibal. Oh, that's right. I forgot he is that. A, in, in real life, he's a no, cannibal. No, I forgot that, I forgot. Yeah. Like, and he is I the would... heir to Arm and Hammer, which is ironic that, it, that it's Arm and Hammer, so, but, uh, yeah, he 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 fled the country Wait, and is now. He's the he's at, like, the heir of Ar Arm and Hammer, and his name is Army Hammer. Yeah. That, why why would they do that to him? <laughs> now you know why he's a cannibal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he destroyed his own career um, mm -hmm. by eating it. I guess uh, the the next one is uh, mm -hmm. something I think Jonathan would probably watch. I got it for the cast, but it, this seems kind of like a. Uh, a Jonathan movie. Jonathan Moody movie. I was trying to combine the two, but it didn't work. And that is Florence Foster Jenkins. Ooh, who does that star? So that yeah. is Meryl Streep and Hugh Grant. Ooh. See, this is something that Jonathan would even say. It is charming and delightful. Probably would. Yeah. And as this guy, uh, the, the guy from um, Big Bang Theory. Oh, uh, which one? Uh, the, the guy who plays... Um... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Howard. Cool. Yeah. So um, it's kind of dark on the back. Oh, it's a Stephen Fears film. That's another Ooh, reason I picked it. I like oh, Stephen no, Fears. I like Stephen Fears. Yeah. So never know. Uh, and then the last one is a double feature of Ninja and Ninja 2, Shadow of a Tear. But not Ninja 3, uh, Domination. There is no Domination on this, no. <laughs> These might be dominating. I'm glad that they did a Ninja and a Ninja 2 because they're, when they made Ninja 3, there was no Ninja 1 and 2. So now there's a whole set. There's just not... Well, there's not Into the Ninja, same. Revenge of the Ninja, the Ninja 3, the Domination. That's the way That's the way they go. Okay. Ninja Returns in Space. <clears throat> ninjas in Space. I would watch it. Amityville Ninjas in Space. <sighs> You don't have to tack on Amityville on everything. Amityville shark ninjas in space. Amityville <laughs> cocaine ninjas in space. There you go. You got everything almost. Without sh and sharks. Let's put sharks. Amityville Ouija mermaid. Shark ninja ninjas. Oh my god. All right, we're uh, done. Uh, <laughs> Was that it? Was that your uh That that's my five. Quickly five, yes. All righty. So, um, as you guys have been knowing this year so far, I've been doing um, certain movies from certain companies and everything. And uh, so the first one is a 4K is Blade Runner, or not Blade Runner, goddamn, Robocop. Blade, Blade Runner would be great on uh, uh, Blade Robo. Mm -hmm. yes. Is this the original Robo or is this the remake? This is the original, and this is on Arrow, and it's the director's cut. So, okay. which is more, more violent, you know, it's nice. Um, they shouldn't even have to say director's cut anymore. That that should just be the standard version that you get it. So that it I should know. just be RoboCop. That's it. It should just be RoboCop. That's it. But like, but yeah. because everybody, so yeah, I mean, technically, I can't tell too much of the difference. It does. Ha it is gorier, and if you look at different things, you can tell. But it's just. Yeah, you know, if you're just watching it to watch it, you're not really thinking, you know. It's mostly it. the scene of of Robocop, well, before he becomes Robocop mm. being shot. Yeah, getting out. blasted, yeah. Yeah, like hell. like yeah. the theatrical version, it's like three shots, but the uh, the is director's this, cut, it's like twenty. Is this where he has the famous line that he flubs when he says, uh, dead or alive, you're coming with Moo? Yeah. No. <laughs> not, yes. They had they had to ADR that yeah. because he did say that. Yeah. They had to fix it. <laughs> All right. Next is an A24 film. So um, remember, I'm going. I'm buying all the A24 Blu-rays that I can, and I've got Hereditary. So Still I actually saw it. this and really enjoyed it. Still haven't seen it. It's really good. Um, I liked it better than Midsummer. Um, Midsummer or whatever you want to call it. I I liked Mid. I, I, I Midsummer just made me feel icky. This movie uh -huh. kind of <clears> just made me. Uh, you know, it was. He was entertaining, you know, or whatever. Like I, Lucy Strangler. <laughs> what, what is with that movie? I laughed out loud. I L O L when uh, the the telephone pole scene. <laughs> I almost died. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. It. Was that from Hereditary or 
Yeah, yeah. I, because Paul hasn't seen it, I don't want to say exactly okay. what it is, mm-hmm. but unless he knows what it is, but, uh, uh, um, it, it's almost as funny as is like it was at Halloween ends with the kid falling off the at the beginning, falling off the second floor, and he kind oh, of yeah. pops back up into the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I get what you're saying. Because yeah. So anyway, it's it's a great movie. I like Hereditary. I think you should watch it film. sometime, uh Paul. Maybe I'll let you borrow it sometime. Um maybe. <clears throat> maybe. I'm very weird about uh letting people borrow stuff these days because I keep for I keep forgetting to write it down where, where where it's at. So I don't know which person's borrowing shit. I'm sure um, it's on Tubi at this point. No, A twenty four will be on either Showtime or HBO Max. Hmm. That's their thing. Um, so the Criterion film for this month is Hidden Fortress, great which movie, I watched half of yeah. last night. Didn't get a chance to finish. I'm I'm planning to finish. It was a great movie. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. It's just I really wasn't, I guess, in the mood and I was tired and moody? just wasn't working. Wasn't in the moody. I wasn't in the moody. No. Um, I I just wish they hadn't ripped off Star Wars. That's the thing that annoys me. Is, yeah, is it's, man. It's like, rip off fucking on Star Wars. Kara, Kara Sawa, That'll man. be on the stars. I mean, it, it's it, it's it's annoying. And they I shot know. in that pretentious black and white. Why? To shoot it, in, you know, just and no Godzilla. And no Godzilla. So, no, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna be black and white, you might as well have a Godzilla in it. You know, that's not, true. not even Minya. Godzilla's annoying, stupid little walking poo of a son. I think he's like his hey. stepson. No, it's Godzilla's son. It, it's his son. So he had sex with another lizard? Mm. Nope. Giant lizard? He laid, he laid his own egg. He's, yeah, I think. He, yeah, I think. He could literally lay his own mm. egg? What else can he do? Jesus. All right. Anyway. Wah, wah. Um, so, uh, was it um, also uh, from Screen Factory? I got Cherry Falls. Huh? Got uh, that. Got that. I saw that. I saw that on Tubi. It's not on Tubi anymore, but. It's all on Tubi and really, really enjoyed it and uh, was surprised. Um, but yeah. when I found it for cheap on online, um, I think either mm. Hamilton Book or one of the cheap, cheap places I went. Cheap, cheap, cheap places I went. I, um, I saw that too, and I was expecting it to be kind of a stinky movie, but um, it's actually better than that. Yeah, it's pretty good. And Brittany Murphy is wonderful. They would, I wish they would find that uncut version of it, but according to Mr. Cliff... Um, that does not exist anymore. Damn, that sucks. Yeah, like like the the closest thing that they could find is like a like a, a like an airport, like an airplane copy. That is just yeah, it just doesn't exist. And last but certainly not least is a vinegar syndrome film, and it was something I had to find, mm-hmm. and I'm really excited about. But it is Blades. Blades. Oh, God. That's about a killer <laughs> no. uh, lawnmower, my my friend. We're doing mm-hmm. this for '80s horror films at some point. Does a man push it at all? So it can. I, be I have not Bond seen it yet. I haven't watched. It. I'm oh, gonna watch God. it later. It's yeah. It's uh, it's pretty wacky. No, I I saw it on VHS when it originally came out. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But that's my five. So. All right. So now we are on to the DVDs. And I am just going to push a whole bunch of, uh, of of Dollar Tree movies that have been taking up space that I haven't gotten to. So we're going to go through these. Um, first one we have is Oculus. I Excellent. have that. I bought it on Excellent. Blu-ray, though. Me too. Next, we have uh, Brendan Fraser, Scott Glenn, and a few other folks in a movie called Journey to the End of the Night. Um, I I have to correct you. That is now Academy Award winner, Brendan Fraser. Fraser. Fraser, by the way, it's not Fraser. Fraser. Don't call him. Don't call him Fraser. He doesn't like it. Whatever. I'll um, call him whatever I want. See here. Next, we have a movie that looks like it should be fun, and it is called The Bride. Oh, don't know. Yeah. Okay. She will rip your heart out. Fuck, man. I don't. Why I ain't finding any of these. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm not finding see. any of them either because the one <clears throat> Dollar Tree at my house, like right next to my house at the Target by my house, does barely cover and carries any DVDs anymore. I have to go across town to to one, and now they're even like getting less and less. Yeah. I live in Hampton. It's the hood, so we've got like eight Dollar Trees all over the place. So, <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> and I haunt them all. 
Um, so the next one is a film by Scott Rosenbaum, and it's got Jason Ritter, Taron Manning, and Peter Fonda, and it's called oh, Perfect Taron. Age of Rock and Roll. Ooh, that looks good. I'd watch that. that I, I, I would avoid it because of Taron Manning. I love Taron Manning. I've said this before. I think that she's just the quintessential version of white trash. And that's why I like her. That's <laughs> why he likes her. Yeah, it's okay. the same thing with Jamie Presley, you know. Like, oh, her I like. I don't know. She's she's got a white trashiness to her. Like she she even made a film called White Pure it? White or Pure, Pure White, white trash. trash. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Something like that. So next we have a movie uh from Ben McPherson called Radio Flash. Nice, I have no. that. Didn't know. No. Don't have any end of the world kind of a thingy. It's um, gonna be in one of my like later halls. This one you know is a cheapie because it's on Genetron, and it is called Have a Nice Funeral. Ah, right? yes, one of the thin cases. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, from 1996. I got that one, yeah. No, maybe not. Next, uh, this looks like some kind of a um, oh, uh, weird futuristic kind of thing. It's called Silencers. Oh, like uh, yeah, I bought that movement. somewhere. I got that somewhere. Men in Black vibes is what I'm getting off. Of I think no, you gave me a copy of it because you had two of them. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So speaking of which, the next one looks fairly similar, uh, and it is got, called Before I'm Dead. Know that one? Yep, got that one. I don't think I have that one. And then, since we're going with people standing in doorways, I had to go to this next one. Pandemonium. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah. So you didn't, you don't have that one yet, Paul. Right here. No, but before then, you didn't get I that one. Don't think so. <laughs> wow, because like I mean, I uh, bought it. We've been talking about it ago. for a while. But you... I bought it a while ago. It's just it's been sitting in my pile of stuff uh, that you, I'm trying to you own get to one of them from that same director from that same company. I MJ remember a while Jackson. back. Yeah, we were uh, yeah. We talked to you about him. Yeah, it might Pandemonium be like is, is fun. Like that. So. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, I, last, I had him on one filmmaker. Yeah. Last on this group is a movie with uh, Stephanie Pearson, and it's called Recovery. Got that one. Nice. What, right. Is it about a recovery uh, place? <laughs> it says, getting sober is a killer. That's I, I had that idea. God damn it. Somebody stole it from me before I... Uh... Before I did it. See, you never you never should think. And you think it goes right out to the world and people <laughs> people get the same it's idea. That's true. All right. That's my first 10. All right. Uh John, you're up. All right. So the first 10 here are are one of the latest box set box is that I got from that MVD uh Wild Eye releasing unearthed uh, uh sale. And these are Wild Eye releasing, um, but it's called Wild Eye Raw and Extreme mm -hmm. line. So I put them all together. Which the I think to mean unfinished and, and uh, you know, having problems. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, the thing that I like. Actually, no, because didn't like Animator came out because it was finished better and fixed so oh okay yeah so some of their I think raw... it's just more gory more extreme more yeah more indie, gory more, more extreme yeah. stuff mm -hmm. but what i like about these is that they number them on the side so you it's it's it kind of it, it you almost want to collect them like a collection because you want to oh well let's well wait i only have four eight and twelve let me go get all the other ones <laughs> so the first one that i have here is zombie exorcism Unrated, God will save you. Which number is Nine. that? Uh, this is 71. 71 spine number. All right. I got that right there. And I like the spine I, number ones, you know. I like it when companies do this because I think it is. It, it, it kind of makes it because uh, I noticed that with like Criterion and stuff, they have the, the numbers down here. Mm -hmm. Paul, and, when we do our company, we're doing that. We're numbering all our movies. Okay. Yeah. I mean, why not, right? Mm -hmm. And now I'm I'm always looking to see if these movies were something else because of my my one time when I was on here and I noticed that it was actually just retitled and I already had a copy of it. This is Norwegian, so who knows? Um, might be good. Um, and then uh, City of Rot. 
And Which, this is number 61. 61. Nice. And um, there is a, a City of Rot 2, but um, I guess they ran out of it. So I got the third one, City of Rot Otherworld. These are all animated, I believe. And this is 63. Nice. So when they finally get up to getting 10 of them done, the last one will be City of Rot 10. <laughs> I'm not getting it. City of Rot 10. Rot, rotten? Rot 10? Oh, boo. I, I'm, now I am out of here. <laughs> Paul's, now Paul's the, the... there with the little dad jokes, man. What the hell? <laughs> I'm old, man. <laughs> that was great. Um, the next two are by one of our favorite filmmakers. It is called Slumber Party Slash a Thon. Directed by Mr. And, DF. And this is number 64. And uh, yes, it is Mr. DF. So, Mr. Dustin Ferguson. I have never heard of this one before. Um, it's 67 minutes. So I don't know if this is just stuff that he put together, like old stuff, and he threw it together. But I, I've never heard of this. So Clip show. Yeah, yeah, I actually picked it up not even knowing it was him. Oh. So I just thought, oh, Slumber Party. So, okay, that, that sounds cool. So I don't know. This one I do know was him. Um, wrong side of the tracks, and it's number fifty-seven. And um, I was part of the kind of quasi sequel to this, Runaway Nightmare. Mm -hmm. So I, I picked it up. So it's actually not bad. It's not horrible. Um, then uh, the Cropsy Incident. Oh yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, I don't know. There was a big run on Cropsy movies in the early aughts. <clears throat> yeah, this is 2017. So might be found footage, who knows, because it's got kind of like the... Okay, so it's... So Slumber Party Slasherton was a t uh, 2012 movie. Sort of... Um, it, it says a killer compilation of clips from the RHR home video library. I knew it was As viewed show. by five girls... During a slumber party. So not just this, you know, um, not just a clip show, but he stole my idea, fucker. Because I had Scary Story Slumber Party, which was an anthology. See, he he, he stole from me before I even realized he stole from me. Ah. Okay. All right. Well, at least we know what it is. Yeah. It's got his sister in it. So I, I, I figured that it, it had to be old. Um, doesn't she still? I mean, she lives out in L uh, LA, I think, with him, doesn't she? No, I think she's still in Nebraska. She's married now to the the guy that's she's been with for a long time. But no, okay, because I, I see, I, I I I hear I hear that they still do stuff together. So I don't know if she. I think she flies visits. out or yeah. does something. Yeah, I, I, she could be out here I, or out in LA. I don't, I don't know, but I don't think so. Uh, the next one is Alabama Sasquatch. Yes, uh -huh. I have that. Yeah, I forgot that's wrong. I have to check it. What's the uh, what's the uh, uh, number on it? Oh, five. So <gasps> five. Wow. Number five. Yeah. Now I just need one through four. <laughs> See, th these are all 99 cents. I'm, I, you know, sorry, filmmakers. Sorry, but your, your movie didn't sell. That's why I got it for 99 cents. So. And and I've even worked on some of the movies that were part of the sale. I already owned them, so I didn't buy them. So and I didn't make money off of them to begin with. Well, I mean, you can always so, you can always not give money or give the movies to Wild Eye, but a lot of these movies, I hate to say it, are not going anywhere else. You know, like no, Lionsgate like, isn't going to pick up Slum Scare. Uh, was this and they're just out there waiting party for folks like you know? us to snap them up. I know. So. I mean, I remember Wild Eye used to just, you know, when I would go to their table at Texas Frightmare, they'd be like, do you have this movie? Do you have that movie? You can have this for free. They would give me free movies because I was a reviewer, you know, and everything. I, I came home with way too much fucking movies that was like weighing down my backpack. And I was like, oh, my God, was not expecting that. It was nice. I really appreciated it. Um, I, we still need to do more reviews of their films and stuff. Maybe do a whole do a whole fucking show just on Wild Eye. We could because I got a bunch of Wild Eye stuff. I know, too. so mm -hmm. I think we'll eventually do that. I know people do Wild Eye Wednesday. We'll have to figure out another 
thing to call it because that's just overused. Right. But, uh, well, and 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 I mean, I like that they have the the raw and extreme. That's a great cover of of, of you know Alabama Sasquatch ripping apart a, a Boy Scout. You know, mm-hmm. unrated. It's it's numbered. It, it's got a good back on it, and they even put stuff inside. Yeah. Oh God, it's almost a... okay. She she's not naked, so we're okay. okay. She's in a bathing suit. So I mean, I, I'm sorry. It, it, it's if if your movie didn't do well, they're gonna sell it for ninety nine cents. It, it's that simple. I mean, even something like Axmas and Axmas Two, which are two of the best sellers at Screen Time Films, he st- he now put them as like both films for fifteen dollars. Yeah. When the first one was fifteen, the second one's twenty because it's two discs. They're now both fifteen bucks if you buy them together. I'm not bitching about it. I'm not mm-hmm. complaining. It sells more movies. And you know, people I- get to see your work. Like, really, what people don't think about, which they're all people are thinking about is, I want to get money for my work. That's not, that's not independent filmmaking. Independent filmmaking is, I want people to see my work and then pay me, you know, for my next project. You know, yeah, because if you're making liked. a living off of this, you're either very lucky or, you know, something's going on because I, the vast majority of indie filmmakers don't make a good living off of that. Yep. Yeah, they have to do. Yeah. I mean, the the uh, uh, the Axmas was on. Um, was it for Brad Twig? It was on Frames of Fear, too. And then when while I picked it up, they changed the title and um, and I bought it. And um, I'm blanking on. I, I just remembered the title now. I, I, I but now I'm blanking. But whatever. And and I contacted Brad and I said, "Oh, now that it's with Wild Eye, do I see any money?" And he goes, "No." So it's like, okay. So I mean, I guess. And it was part of the ninety nine cent sale. I'm not complaining. I didn't make a dime off of that. All so right. you know, whatever. I uh, got a few more here. Um, now these are just regular wild eye films. This is a part of that raw and extreme, and it's another one from our buddy Moon of the Blood Beast. I heard about that. Yeah, isn't that like a sequel to a I you know public domain movie? It's yeah, it's an unofficial sequel to Track of the Moon Beast, yeah, which is public domain, and that's why I almost bought it. But then so, you realized it was Dustin Ferguson, and you well, <laughs> no, I'd still buy it. It's just I, I mean. I didn't want to go too crazy, but next time they have another 99 cent sale, I'll probably get it. Spoiler. Uh, the moon beast does not look like that at all. Spoiler. Uh, what a surprise. It just looks like a devil mask. All but right. the good thing is that um, the uh, Alan Maxim, who uh, hmm. plays the, the the blood beast. So that's pretty cool. Nice. But I will give props because doing a sequel or a remake of a public domain movie, you know, but especially a sequel, I like that's that's a good way to do an independent film because you don't got to worry about getting permission or paying for stuff. You know what I mean? He well, does a lot of with that being said, he is remaking the movie that you're I know you absolutely I know. love. So I mean, I know the only Spider-Man. thing that's great about that is that it's going to get more attention for the original movie and more people who've never heard of it will. We'll hopefully check it out. So, um, but I know no. that was one on your forgotten horror classics, and now it's, it's not going to be movies. forgotten very much. Have you seen it? Because it's a great film. Uh I've no, I it. haven't yet. But uh, yeah. Jack Hill, yeah. It's, it, uh, it's funny, is the I was flipping, you know, uh, uh, channels. I guess you could say it. I don't know what you call it these days, but uh, and um, or apps maybe. And one of them that it's a local station out here in Vegas. And the guy was interviewing one of the actresses from Spider Baby, and I and I watched it, seeing if she would mention the remake, and she never mentioned the remake at all. I mean, it, even though it's Jack Hill, I don't see why we couldn't someday do it on any film cafe. Because Moody, I think you would love it. Maybe at some point. I mean, um... it's got Sid Haig, and it's a good film. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's weird. Um, and then uh, got the Wicked Ones. Ah, I got that. Mm-mm. So and I don't got uh, that from. Was that from uh, w- uh, Wild Eye? I don't have the Wild, Wild Eye, Eye version. I think I got the regular. Yeah, Tori Tori Jones. He was on one filmmaker, and I think the the I think this is the sequel. Yep. Yeah, they did the Wicked One, the and, Wicked uh, One. Yeah, which they didn't have. So I I interviewed him for the first one, and this is the second one. So which is nice. Maybe you'll have to get him back on that one. You know. Yeah. 
And then the last one is Creature Cabin. Cool. It's a creature in a cabin. Yeah. <clears throat> it should have been creature in a cabin, like cabin by the woods, creature in a cabin, you know, <clears throat> like. But what if he never enters the cabin? What if he's just, what if the creature is always outside? Outside the cabin? Well, then creature or, outside the cabin. Whatever, be, whichever way they go with, man. It could be creature log cabin, and it could be made, you know, a monster made out of syrup. Oh, I would eat that. I would eat that creature. Mm. There you go. I bet it's good. All right, that's the last yummy. one. Yummy, yummy, yummy. All right. So my first ten. Um, all right. So to start with, uh, we I have a four film favorites. This is all in mm -hmm. alphabetical order. You guys don't do that, but I'm weird, so I do that shit. Yes, um, you are. So uh, four film favorite it. of Urban Action Collection. This has uh, so it's got that, and I'll read everything off. It's got oh, Black, nice! That's a good collection. Black Belt Jones, Black Samson. Hot potato. I got it for hot potato because I remember, I remember my uh, video store used to have hot potato all the time. I wanted mm -hmm. to watch. I never did. Uh, I think it's Jim Kelly. If I'm correct. It's a lot of fun. I've seen. I've seen at least all the movies you've mentioned. And three, the hard way was the last. Yep. One. So there you go. That's you've a probably collection. seen all of them. Yeah. Um. Then this is one of the worst films. Now I'm friends with the filmmakers, and I feel bad for saying this. Because I mean, it's just not my, it's not my cup of tea. It will be on Indie Film Cafe at some point, uh, and that's why I bought it. But it's it is it's pretty rough. I'm not gonna lie, um, and it's because I've heard there's a lot of problems with the production and all this other stuff, you know. But they they tried to make something good, and they have a huge cast, amazing cast. And I'll read the cast in a second, but it's the family. Um, with uh, Mark Hansen, Joe Hollow, um, Joe Hollow is one of the co-directors. Uh, Andy Savage or Angie Savage, Shannon Lark, Tony Todd, Michael Behrman, and Kane Hodder. Um, so great cast, but like and Harry Manfredini, you know, did some of the music. You know, better watch but, it. The director's gonna want to come on Indie Film Cafe and yell at us. Yeah, well, can't help that if that happens. You know, um. No, another uh, director that I really like is uh, uh, he's really hasn't done much uh, else, but uh, I really, you know, uh, I really adore his special effects too. Is Marcus Cook, and he did a movie called Fell, uh, starring uh, Jeff Dylan Graham, and that's going to be on Indie Film Cafe as well at some point. Um, so it's I, I get these movies from like eBay or Amazon because they are not on Tubi. You know, right. and I want to eventually right. do them for Indie Film Cafe, but it's just got to be through the studio, you know, because not everybody has a copy of this movie. A uh, movie that is, I believe, on Tubi that I want to do eventually for a quick review Thursday or whatever. It's called Going Down. I wonder what that's about. You know, um, a, Australia, uh, going to Australia. An elevator. Uh, an elevator. I said the party is over, but the guests keep hmm. coming. There is, there is a movie. How is coming wanted... spelled? A killer elevator, uh, by the, the way. Regular, uh, mm. The regular way. I'm going to have yeah. to get that. What? There's a movie about a killer elevator. Oh. Yeah, it's done How? by the guy. Yeah, it's called The Lift. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, it's done by the guy who did Amsterdam. Uh, Dick Mass, M-A-S-S. -S. All right. So another movie that has a crazy cast in it that I just, you know, when I saw the cast, I was like, okay, I gotta get this movie. It's uh, called The Independent, and the cast includes Jerry Stiller, Janine Garofalo, uh, Max Perlich, Perlich, uh, oh, Ginger Perlich. Uh, Lynn at what? Max Perlich. Do you know him? Oh yeah. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Ginger uh, Lynn Allen, Karen Black, Peter Bogdanovich, Billy Burke, Nick Cassavetes, Andy Dick, Fred. Uh, Dreyer, Ethan Embry, Jonathan Katz, Ron Howard, John uh, Lydon, Julie Strain, Bob Odenkirk, Fr and Fred Williamson. So I'm guessing Fred the Hammer Williamson. Um, and yeah, so that right there is just a Is it crazy a documentary? Cast. Um, so it's a mockumentary style kind of thing. They're, but I think that's how they got them <clears throat> to do it because, you know, they're only in it for like you know, a couple hours or whatever for these documentaries. It's a it's a documentary about an independent film filmmaker. Or some you know a, mo a mockumentary about uh 
Uh, the Independence is a story of one man's struggle for a little bit of recognition. Um, it's filled with interviews from Morty celebrity friends and stuff. So I, I would love to do a mockumentary. Yeah, well, it's easy because all you got to do is just film people talking and then maybe a couple things of stuff happening, but like really mostly talking. But you, you got to make it funny. That's the thing. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So this double feature year is Kickboxer th uh, 3 and 4, which, oh. you know, now, now I have both of them. I have all the Kickboxers now, which makes me happy. Um, Because you're a martial artist. Hmm? Because you're a martial artist? A uh, former martial artist. I don't know if I'm considered one now because I haven't done martial arts in freaking We should do a I'm movie called one. Box Kicker, and it's a guy who runs around and kicks boxes. <clears throat> no. That just sounds boring. All right. So next is uh, another movie. Remember, I was doing a, a bunch with that Keith Gordon um, did, and this one's A Midnight Clear. Good one. Uh, never seen it. Still actually. need to get Waking the Dead. That's the one that you're I, missing. I think I am missing that one because I know it's his best movie. I know in the next one, I think I have another. Or do I? I don't know. I know coming up, I have another one, and then I know I have uh, Murder, Murder, Mother's Night, Mother's Night, something like that. So, um, here's an interesting one that stars uh, Julie Haggerty, Stephen. Tobolowski, Philip Vaden, and Marnette Patterson. So I've been getting all the Marnette Patterson movies. I got Hope Dreams. So, Hope Dreams? No, no, yeah, no, no idea, but it's people. one. It was the grand jury winner of Atlanta Film Festival, Newport Film Festival, Atlanta Film Festival, Stony Brook Film Festival, all over. Just a bunch of film do, festival winner. Do any of the popes give it thumbs up? Like I don't Pope John think Paul so. the Second, Pope John Paul the Third, Pope. It, yeah. it just says in the vein of Goodwill Hunting and Garden State, Pope Dreams is the coming of age tale about a young man at the crossroads in life, filled with heart, music, life, and loss, and a set of drums. So okay, okay, that's all there I know. Go. All right, uh, the last two. So this one stars Juliette Lewis, Michael Rappaport, <clears throat> Giovanna Ribisi. Marissa Ribisi and Jeremy Sisto in this movie is Some Girl. Um, it's also, oh, yeah, I know that one. It's also written, co-written by Marissa Ribisi. Mm -hmm. And I saw it. It's actually a pretty damn good movie. I yeah, liked it. I, I like Juliette Lewis a lot. <clears throat> oh, God, she's so good. She's, um, she's vanished, unfortunately. Well, she's also a Scientologist, so who knows what she's doing, you know. Um, And last, uh, I remember last month, I showed you guys a Ben Affleck movie or whatever, and here's the second Ben Affleck movie that I got from the thing is The Third Wheel, starring uh, Luke Wilson, Denise Richards, Jay L uh, Lacopo, Lacopo, and uh, uh, what is it? Uh, and, and Ben Affleck, and uh, rom -com. one from one of the producers of American Pie. Rom com. Uh, it's it's not really. It's not a rom com. It's like. Uh, it's about a guy who the third wheel. So the guy, this guy is, uh, Luke Wilson and Denise Richards are trying to, you know, be together and everything. And, and the whole time this dude Jay is just sort of in the middle between them and kind of causing problems with their Cock relationship. Block. What? Cock block. Yeah. He's just basically causing tr trouble with the relationship. It's pretty funny. I remember seeing it back in the day and really liking it. So, you know, that was it. So those are my, uh, First 10. All right. So my last group, I'm going to start off. The first six are from that MVD sale that Mr. Ward told me about. The other half are going to be saved for next month so that I you know, can space it out a little bit. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then the first one is called We Are the Waiting, mm -hmm. which is Michael Taylor Pruitt's film. Uh, and it's interesting. It's about a scoop. It says a group of friends escaped to Canada to avoid being drafted to fight in World War III. And then this mass killer starts to stalk them and shits and giggles happen. So <laughs> sounds fun. Gotta like shits and giggles. Next, we have something called Silk Scream. Okay. Got Don't know much about this one, but I did like the cover. 
So well, it's got uh, silk stockings. So there you go. So somebody is killing a various owners of t-shirt shops in New Orleans. Oh. That's kind of niche. <laughs> You find, like, you're I, finding some of the like wackiest kind of shit. I'm like, what? You know, some of these you got to read them, and and they uh, uh they tell yeah, you they, some they, funny they, things, you know. And you're they like, let okay. you, yeah. They give you the little synopsis down. That's why I bought it because I'm just like, that sounds that sounds weird. Next one is a movie that is produced, written, and directed by Max Demonthor, or Demonthor, and it is Demon Mother. Demon she, Mother. She breeds, you bleed. <laughs> Based on the story of John Ward's mother. <laughs> hmm. She bred okay. and bred you and then bled you. And then I, this is one I knew nothing about, but I saw the, the cover and I saw the title. I'm like, oh, yeah, I have to get this. It's called Jack versus Lanterns. Oh, God, yes. Uh, <laughs> so Jason LaCory, who made that movie, made a bunch of films in like uh, Florida. I think that's where he made or he, I don't know if he still lives there or not. But he used to make all these films in Florida. Dustin Hubbard knew him pretty well mm-hmm. and everything. And uh man, he used to be on my radio show and stuff. Um, but I don't I don't talk to him at all anymore. I don't know what happened, just he's you know, just we're separated as like friends, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff. Happens. But that just sounds crazy because there's Jack versus Lanterns, there's also Jack versus something else. So there's two, you right. know. Um so this next one comes from a comic book guy by the name of Tim Vigil. I don't know if you know him. Um, and it is called Amityville Vampire. Got that one. Yep. Speaking of Amityvilles, because uh, yep. you just you can't get enough Amityvilles. Amityvilles everywhere, man. Oh, yeah. And then we have, of course, I couldn't pass this one up either. Clown of the Dead. Got that one. Yep. Because it's the clown that's, the, you know, zombie clown, right? I would hope. Right, 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 right. Okay, and then the last four are not um, the MVB stuff, but it's other things that I've gotten during the month. First one is going to be from Rene Cardona Jr., the notorious Ed Wood of Mexico. And I think I talked to you about this before, Mr. Moody, and it is a movie called Cyclone. Heard of it, yeah. It's pretty stinky. Um. Then this is a weird ass movie I saw years ago in college and never thought about it again until it popped up on when I was looking around for stuff. And I happened to notice it was on DVD and I'm like, all right, this is the uncut widespread version of Young Hannah, Queen of the Vampires. Nice. Is is she really like a Queen of the Vampires or is this going to be another Zuzu thing? Uh, no, it kind of sort of is, and um, it's but it's also Euro trash, so there's lots of boobage. Okay, so not safe to show, Jen. Probably not. No, 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 no. And then the last two are from Jerry Landy, who's a guy that I've been talking with, and um, he's the guy who did the uh, the um, Crackcoon, the original Crackcoon, and then he did the second Crackcoon movie. What was it called? Blood something blood harvest raccoon yeah which we're gonna do on indie film cafe and i reached out to him and he's like oh well uh, here's a couple more movies because i was telling him you can't get his movies anywhere well he hooked me up and um first one is it's called it says crosby but what it really is is bill huxtable serial killer bill <laughs> like huxtable that. serial killer yeah. all right and then the one that i really wanted i can't wait to see this Bronx Bigfoot. <laughs> nice. Bronx Bigfoot. <clears throat> you love your Bigfoot, so you know. Oh God, I can't wait! It's going to be so much fun. So, so who would win, Alabama Sasquatch or Bronx Bigfoot? If they got into a fight. Uh, they should fight each I'm other. I'm going with Bronx they Bigfoot. I'm sorry. Get those, get those filmmakers together. Put them he's, together. Make one movie. You know, this, this, this Bronx Bigfoot is like mafia related. So, <laughs> so he's a badass like that. Okay. Oh, sorry, go. Alabama Sasquatch. I don't know if he can, uh, but he can handle it. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll probably try and do this maybe next season because, you know, we only do one per season from folks if we can. But and I'm we've got guessing raccoons coming up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, John, your turn. Oh, that's it. Okay. Um, these are from that same sale, but they are unearthed for the most oh. part. 
So um, got this one, which I was surprised about. And these are 99 cents from Under Earth, too? No, these were like $3, $4, you know, somewhere in there. Okay. So, um, and it's The Dark Side of the Moon, which I was surprised to see from them. So I remember when it came out on VHS, and it's an alien movie. It's just like an alien ripoff. Nice. So it's kind of, I thought it was weird that it was Under Earth Films. But um, yeah, I, I remember liking it. So why not? Uh, the next one is also Unearth Films, and it is Red Crocodile Director's Cut. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, I think it's end of the world type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I picked that I up. I see that. I'll have to see the next uh, sale. Then <laughs> this is, I forget where I saw the review for this. It might have been Red Letter Media. I'm not sure. But it's called Dis. Probably something that Jay would recommend. And it's um, uh, Bill um, Oberst. Is that how you say his name? Bill oh, Oberst. Bill oh, Oberst? Bill Oberst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oberst Jr. Yeah. So he, he's, he's, he's the main guy stuff. in it. He's in a lot of indie stuff. He's, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, he's a, he's a force to be reckoned with. He's good. Yeah, I guess there's like a lot of walking around on this. It's kind of like an end of the world type thing, I think. Uh, but it it was highly recommended if you you know like that type of stuff. Do the trees so. walk? Well, I'll tell you about Bill Overs. He's he's good, mm -hmm. but he's not that good that he saves a film when it's bad. So no, but he's but he's the best part of usually a lot he of usually the films. Is. Yeah. Uh, the next one, this sound did, I, for some reason, I'm beginning a lot of kind of end of the end of the world type of stuff. This is uh, What the Waters Left Behind, also from Unearthed Films. Nice. What did so, they leave behind? Because you have to watch the movie to find out. I guess so. Um, and then they didn't send me City of Rock 2. So they sent me this, which is something that I, I would normally never buy because I just don't care about this type of stuff. But it's like, OK, and this is from uh, Severin and it's a Jess Franco film and it's Vampiros Lesbos. Oh, that's a great movie. I mean, it's a stinky boobage kind of movie, but it was great. That's I love Jess Franco. <laughs> I like his stuff, but this is just not not for me. I, I just I'm not into this type of stuff. So it, it's like, OK, I guess I'll I'll. I mean, I have to take it, I guess. I mean, it's, it's, it's well, did you contact them and form. said there, there was a mess up on the... No, I, I, I just assumed they were out of City of Rot 2 and then they sent this as a replacement. So it's like, okay, I don't own it. Mm -hmm. So, you nice. know, if they do another sale, I'll see if they have City of Rot 2. And then I mean, I've already it. got it, but man, I'd be stoked if they sent that to me and I didn't have it already. <clears throat> do you already uh, have okay. it? Okay. Paul, do you have it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, now the next one is um, from a filmmaker that I am currently working with, which is why I have this this awesome stash. Um, which oddly, w when um, I was at the private screening for my little nightmare, everybody said I should keep. Um, I'm, I'm unfortunately letting stuff grow in here, but they said I should keep it. And then I went to the grocery store the other day, and all these women were looking at me, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I will keep it. There you I don't go. Know. But um, the film that I'm working on is called Roofless, and it's from the director of Shock 'em Dead, the Tracy Lords film. Nice. I've so, heard of that. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, he gave this to me, and uh, it's the 20th anniversary edition. And it's, according to the film, it's based on a true story. It says it right there. Yeah. I was a big Tracy Lords fan back in the 80s. I mean, I came of age when she was. You know, <laughs> you came thing. of age. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I uh, um, I owned a lot of her earlier films. Hmm. In fact, I think I think she and I are only like a year apart age wise. Did you talk to yeah. her when she was that uh, scares that care? Yeah, I got to say hello, but not much else. You know, she was fan. very much about. Amen, kind thing. of thing about the yeah, money yeah. because yeah. like even andre tried talking to her for a second she was like pretty much like oh you're gonna buy something for me no and then uh yeah so and yeah, andre was, was getting more luck with uh everybody else than she than, was all business yeah yeah she was all business which but, is great you know, which is fine. great if you're there you should be all business like i'm not talking smack about her at all 
I love her. I adored her. I just couldn't, like, I couldn't afford anything because I already spending way too much money there, you know. Yeah. But next time she's at a convention, local convention, I'm buying something from her because, you know, not to be. Well, she's even when back in the day when she was doing the adult films, she was all about business because she had her own company. Mm -hmm. So she was like one of the first porn stars to have her own company. And there's a whole theory behind all of that. So um, uh, from researching and you know watching documentaries about the porn industry i kind of feel bad because she's kind of painted into a corner now because you know as actresses get older and they age out of most of the leads there's not a whole lot for them to do and she can't really go back and do the porn stuff either so this is like an opportunity to get some money i mean there are granny porn i mean you know that's true i i don't because she legally changed her name to tracy lord so she knew what she was doing i mean her name is norma kutzma Mm -hmm. and and it's uh she legally just, changed it. So there you go. Yeah. So I, I, I really don't, I, I don't buy her book. Literally. I mean, I didn't buy it and I don't buy what's in it that she was forced to do it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that talks about her and during that yeah, time. There's, there's a big debate. I didn't want to get into that because I, I just don't know. It's a, he should, she said, it's kind of thing. Well, I, I used to know, cause I worked at a video store up in Marin County and a, a few male older porn stars came in from around that time period. And I would talk to them about it and they would tell me a lot of stuff. And and so it's, it's like I knew John Leslie and Joey Savea and, and a bunch of these people and um, Jamie Gillis and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so there's, everything seems to contradict what, what she says, but I I like her as an actress. She was somebody who I would like to work with. and, And I actually like her CD. She came out with a CD, and I actually like that. Um, so yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, she had that music career for a hot minute. Yeah, for one CD. Yeah, that was it. And there, for one CD, that's a, that's a minute, and like that's a second, you know, pretty much. You know. Yeah. So hey, yeah, she me. was better than Corey Feldman. Come on. Hey, don't you be making <laughs> yeah. fun of my buddy. Um. So now the next one is one of my favorite Nicolas Cage movies, Knowing. Knowing. No directed or written, written and directed by the guy who did uh or wait no he was going to direct he was gonna he was gonna write richard kelly was gonna write and direct knowing and then he got i guess let go from it and somebody else took over i forgot who he knew too much yeah apparently richard kelly yeah the the uh donnie so darko he... guy oh that richard kelly okay okay I'm getting all these Kelly people mixed up. I, I don't know, like the low budget Kellys, the more expensive Kellys. I mean, it, it's, but yeah, it's directed by the guy who did The Crow in Dark City. Yeah, Alex Price, so this, right? Yeah. So this yeah. is a really, this is a great one. And then also picked up um, another Nick Cage film. Got a Bangkok Dangerous. So got that. You one could do a whole podcast on Nick Cage stuff. Yeah. And we should. So, um and we then, say this and then we're all upset that we're like doing too many podcasts. I know, I know. Um, and then the next one is one that I brought up on the found footage one that I did with uh, Donald on a, a film discussion. Um Area 51 from the director of Paranormal Activity. Nice, Orin Pelly. Yeah. So I um I understand why this is only one movie. So I guess we weren't getting Area 52, Area 53, Area 54. Well, I mean, so it's... it would be Area 51 Part 2. <laughs> What's fun in that? You got to play with the title. Area 51 in space. So. Area or in the desert Area in this 51. case. Area 51 and... in space. I love that. Yeah. And then the last one is mm-hmm. from uh, Scream Factory. And it is Zombie Fight Club. Zombie Fight Club. I know that what's one. the rule? What's the what's the first rule? I don't know. I picked this up because I had no idea it existed because I I told Joe Luhan an idea that I had called um, Zombie Fights. And, and it would be a three part movie and it was about people who fought zombies. Like and, a bomb you know, like fighter boxing. thing? Yeah. And, and it was a whole thing on this. And then he goes, you know, there's Zombie Fight Club. And I'm like, what? And I just happened to be at Zia Records and they had a copy. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm just like, huh. you know, it's 
Well, you, you know, it's like we get these great ideas and then you don't realize like well, how, you know. Remember in the 80s, they had that that thing where they had the bum fights and people got in trouble for giving money to bums so that they would fight each other and then film it. Um, I found that funny. You could do that where you make a bum fight a zombie. I mean, that's, or zombies <laughs> fight each other. Yeah, yeah, bum versus zombie. That's that's a great idea. Bum versus zombie. I watched that. <laughs> Tell me. I mean, seriously, that'd be great. Or is that it? It. that was... that's it? That, that's it. Okay. That's everything. Wow. All right. Oh, the the film that um, I was thinking of that was on Wild Eye releasing that was changed the title is Brutality. Oh, Brutality. The one that has Aximus. Yeah. It has The name has nothing to do with the, the anthology. The cover has nothing to do with the anthology. But it's, well, yeah, it's Brutality. Where did I and, and I never saw a dime. But I'm perfectly fine with that because Brad Twig was the first person to release my film. So I do not complain about that. I just only say that because of Joe Castro of, of what he said. Yes. So, so, All right. Yeah. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. So my last 10. Oh, shit. I thought we were done. Oh, we're almost done. Um, oh, fuck. How much longer is this? Jesus. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> How much longer? Oh, uh, I don't know who you're having sex with. All right. <laughs> anyway. Um, so next one is a movie called 10 Years. And it um, it stars Lynn Collins, Rosario Dawson, Jenna Dewan Tatum, uh, Brian Ger- Garrity, uh, Ari Grainer, who was in Disaster Artist. She played the uh, or uh, Lisa or whatever was her uh, or girl who played Lisa. Um, Oscar Isaac, Ron Livingston, Justin Long, Anthony Mackie, Kate Mara, uh, Max Minghella, Aubrey Plaza. Yeah, Oper, Chris Pratt, and Channing Tatum. That is I a fucking ass, like awesome. right there. Damn, and, it's like I want I want to see it for for her, and then I I don't want to see it for Chris Pratt. Right. Yeah. So it's like, uh, like Chris Pratt. I I, I saw it recently. I rewatched Pratt. it recently because I'd seen this before. I saw this on like uh, Netflix or something, you know, or some or Tubi or something. But I, uh, I I bought it because you know it's kind of I mean it's it's got a cast there and Aubrey Plaza all of them so oh, this great I love great cast Plaza. I know and she she is hilarious in this from Delaware uh, she's hilarious in this um, but well she's I mean what is she not hilarious in maybe Chucky she still has some funny lines in Chucky I think but anyway but she's gorgeous in Chucky yeah mm. she's gorgeous in Chucky that's true gorgeous she's gorgeous in everything. In everything. Um, so ten years, it was a, uh, it was okay. Like I liked it. It had some funny moments. It's not, it's not something I would like say is the most amazing, you know, film or anything. Um, then, uh, so last month I had a movie called Amongst Friends. Now I have a movie called Among Friends. You know, starring uh, or directed by uh, Danielle Harris. Yes. Who, uh, and uh, stars. Uh, well, she's in it, but like briefly. But uh, Christopher Backus, Jennifer Blanc, uh, Kane Hodder, and uh, Alyssa Lobo. Kane Hodder was hilarious in this, just playing a limo driver, you know, guy. Small cameo, but it was so fun. And then a movie that we reviewed for Indie Film Cafe, um, but I did not own yet. Um, I got it, you know, we watched it through Tubi, and that's a crack in the floor. And I'm worried that it's got a crack in the disc. Hmm. Because it, the the thing's all fucked up. Does it come oh, with I hate chickens? that. Yeah, but no, I'll have to get a new disc chicken? or new um no uh, uh, cover. No, no, no chickens. Yeah, Cracking no floor, man. I chicken. have you seen that movie, uh, Cracking the Floor, uh, John? No. Gary uh-uh. Busey is so fucking ridiculous in that movie. Oh my goodness. Even more than usual. Even more than usual. Probably. I, I, I can avoid anything with him in it post motorcycle accident. Right. I watch everything pre motorcycle accident. He's just he's just a wackadoodle character in that. I think they just said, "Be yourself," and he was like, "All yeah, right, they, they I can just do it." Wound him up and let him go. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Um. So another another horror film I got here is Deep in the Woods. Um, I heard about this movie. I think it's probably pretty bad, but I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Bunch of teenagers, no. right? Uh, five sexy young actors are hired to perform at a millionaire's estate hidden deep in the woods where 
unsettling news bulletin report on another victim falling prey to a bloody serial killer. The performance suddenly turns into a night of terror as one by one the actors are savagely murdered. Deep in the woods, the nightmare begins. Um, it's okay. whatever. It's your cheesy slasher thing. I may do it for like one of the uh, uh, one of our shows for like first time watch Fridays, which, you know, stuff like that. Um, so now here's a movie uh, that stars Agnes Bruckner, uh, Kelly Garner, Justin Long again. Jeez. Yeah, a lot of movies by I him. like Agnes Bruckner. Uh Gina Gershon and mm. uh John Corbett. And it's called Dreamland. Oh. Huh. Um Mm-mm. and it's yeah, it's not directed by anybody big Is or that anything. Australian? Uh New Mexico. New Mexico, okay. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> If you said New Zealand, I could understand well, maybe being uh, similar there's to. There's an Australian movie called Dreamland that I've been trying to get my hands on. No, that's so not the that's same good. one. No. Um, then a movie directed. Uh, is it directed by him? I know it was written by him. Yes, written and directed by the guy who did create Entourage. Mm-hmm. Like that. Um, it's called Kissing a Fool. Um, starring David Schwimmer, uh, Mila of Avatar, and Jason Lee. And uh, I, just, I, I I know it, but I might have even seen it when it first came out. Being a Friends fan, but yeah, no. Okay. Oh, you're a fan of David Schwimmer, which he plays reach, like an asshole in this movie, if I if I'm correct. And we can Jason reach, Lee's the good guy, kissing a cow. Yeah. Um, and then a movie directed by Jason Mewes. There's mm. a and stars a huge amount of people, so. Jason Mewes, Vinnie Jones, Gina Carano, not G- Gina Carano, <laughs> not somebody to be uh, putting on your, yeah, she's kind of canceled right now. Jamie uh, Camille, uh, Brian O'Halloran, Blake Harrison, Stan Lee, Ivana Lynch, Mickey Gooch Jr. Oh, another person who's sort of canceled these days is Dean Cain, uh, Zach Galligan. Oh, and another just always cancel people. What do you guess? Ron Jeremy? No, but uh but more closer to what Dean Kane is, you know. Um Casper Van Dien. Was, I have, Casper I have, Casper's he's not canceled? As, not canceled. I was thinking of the other one. Uh wasn't there um another Kevin guy? Sorbo? Yeah, Kevin Sorbo, who's who I was thinking of. Sorry. That would have been how was Je- what did Janine Garofalo do to get canceled? Je- Gina Carano uh, uh, Gina Carano, that's the chick from. Oh, uh, Gina Carano. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I, I, not I, Janine Garofalo. That would have been great, though. That, that's who I heard. I, I oh, wish she was her. in that big in this movie because you know. But um, uh, yes, yes. Judd he's, he's Nelson, Terry Hatcher, David uh, Dast Malachian with Danny Trejo and Kevin Smith, and it is the movie Madness in the Method. Yeah. You know, hmm. So. I like uh, how they put the sticker over his fake teeth. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, that was like, one of the most disappointing things because they didn't advertise the picture this way. And it came like half of it's like cut off and all this other shit. I was kind of disappointed, but I was like, I just want the movie. I don't give so, Somebody up. sent me a picture. I ha- And I'm going to have to get this for you, Moody, but it's apparently it's a little plastic doll of Danny Trejo with his shirt off. And you he comes with a comb, and you get to comb his hair. Uh, <laughs> sounds wonderful. Um, like comb Danny's hair is it something it's something goofy like that. I don't think I have That's this funny. in my collection somewhere, so I, I decided to buy it. I may have it. Um, I know it's not a movie I watch all the time. I, it's my least favorite Monty Python movie, but it is uh, Monty Python's Meaning of Life. Oh, I, I like. like your, I like. I did like. You just Holy say your Grail. least favorite. I said my least favorite. Yes, I like. I. I. I the way I like it is, uh, you know, um, what is it? The, the Holy Grail, then, then Life of Brian, then this, you know, which is the way it came out, you know, or whatever. But that's how I like. You know, that's how I view the movies. It's my least watched, you know, of them, you know, but I'll probably check it out sometime again. I haven't seen it in forever. Um, so as I said last uh, last couple uh, episodes of this, I was doing sort of a um, what is it the uh, indigent movies and stuff, and so tadpole. 
uh, starring uh, Scorny Weaver, John Whit Ritter, and BB uh, Newworth. So, I, I remember liking that. BB yeah. Newworth. Wow, I haven't seen her. In... <laughs> well, I mean, this was in 2004 or something. This is a while ago. So, um, but yeah, because the the director of this passed passed away sadly a while back, and he was part of that. In he started that indigent group, uh, who's been making uh, independent digital entertainment. So, uh, and then last but maybe least, I don't know, um, is a movie called uh, Winter Break. I know of it. Yeah, stars Milo Vinta Mila or whatever. I, I don't. No, if I was saying his name right, Maggie Lawson, Eddie K. Thomas from American Pie, and uh, I, I love this. It says DVD bonus features, producer and cast, an excuse for another party commentary. <laughs> so you know they're having fun with it at least, and uh, it's just the idea of it's a ski slope movie, you know, kind of like Ski School and all that, but more I guess more American Pie like. You know, they even promote. They said better than warm American or warm apple pie. So oh, okay. you know, trying to kind of go with the. I, I have a feeling I would disagree with that, but okay. You know, Eddie K. Thomas was a uh, Finch or whatever the the guy who wouldn't go to the bathroom at the high school in American Pie. So he's you know, um. But anyway, uh, it looked okay. Like it looked like a comedy that I would like. You know, kind of thing. So. Not something he would like. Oh, is that the picture? <laughs> oh, nice. That's funny. Comb, comb Mr. Treo's hair. There you go. <laughs> would you would you buy that just to comb his hair? I would buy just to wig people out. <laughs> just to have if I bought it. You can't take it out of the box. I mean, you gotta keep it just like that. Uh, so well, you have to play it. You have to buy I like two. to play with it. Or buy two, yeah. And buy two. One one you can play with. It's just so funny. Machete don't play. <laughs> Machete don't comb. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, that that brings us to the end of our halls, but now here's our updates or whatever. Um so we March really kicked off a bunch of shit. So we kicked off um, you know, bringing back film freaks. We still got Criterion Watch we're doing, but we have decided recently that we're going to do 5 film freaks this year then next year do another five as part of part two of season and so that way we can also do other <laughs> shows there's a bunch that paul wants to start yeah, at this do. point i just wait for moody to send me uh, uh every month or every week you know what am i doing just yeah the schedule for for, for what, what we were doing this I, I week or month or up. whatever can't keep up yeah um i think uh, yeah uh john's waiting me for to for me to send him the schedule for uh, coming up for the next uh, horror film lovers um, stuff. So we yeah. got, we got a lot going on, um, you know, here. Um, I'm trying to think, but as I said, film freaks is up criteria watch. We just started with the fuck Friday again, which bringing that back eighties um, horror films, nineties horror films still going um, Hollywood knockbuster still going Hollywood Boulevard still going. Good God. Um, yeah, we are. We've been busy. Um, we're gonna be do. We're gonna be recording a new episode of Indie Film Cafe Spotlight soon, so that'll be good. Try to get that back. So we've been sort of uh, thinking on that, and then um, Indie Film Cafe itself. You know, so we've got. We'll be finished with this season in July. I did not think that was kind of happen, and then I started looking at how much we've already done. <laughs> we've already recorded almost all of them so like we're, we're actually all august off yeah so that's the plan is that august mm -hmm. off then we'll come back in september and uh yeah there's uh, we'll be done in july so uh but we've got a few more that we're doing in april and then so april's going to be a busy month um uh and then you know uh and then paul uh john, john and i are doing the horror film lover stuff for mainstream monday we're taking a break this week of stuff then the next week we go back to to recording um things and uh i'm really excited because um we've got some more like we got like i think five or six episodes left of 
for like half the season. Then we're going to take a break and then come back and, and finish the rest of we'll have 40 episodes. Can you believe that? That's a lot. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, it's a lot more than uh, Paul. Paul would go 40. No, you know, uh, he, he wouldn't be able to do that much. Um, I don't think, but I got garden work to do and baseball season and all kinds of other stuff. Well, I mean, John and I mainly do the mainstream Monday. Like he does come and help out with certain shows. And I've been on a couple of his podcasts and stuff. So that's been wonderful. We did a Stephen King one that's out. Freaking you yeah. did that and then put it out the next day. I was I was shocked. <laughs> that was the idea. Oh, I didn't know that. Like I didn't know. I wanted, uh, yeah, I wanted two out that that week. So okay, good. So you got yeah. you got that out. That was great. Um, and then, uh, and you're still doing that with uh, Donald, right? Like film discussion. Yeah, film film discussion. Yeah, we're not sure what we're gonna do next, but yeah. Is that like every month? It's once a month. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, I I think. Uh, it's going to be announced tomorrow, but you know, which is Monday. This will be out on what is it? What's the first? What's April first? Is that Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. This will be out on Saturday. Uh, this episode. Um, and uh, so it already be announced, but uh, Madeline Deering is joining um '90s horror films. Um, mainly because every time I I had her I had her as a guest, and then I would say. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I love that movie. And I'm like, I'm doing this. Next. Oh, I love that movie. movie. And every I'm like, it, she she loves it. Like, yeah, every every movie. But like, I would mention these things, and she's like, ah, I, you know, I'd love to do that. And uh, so I've got her as my special guest for that. Um, and uh, special guest for or the my new co-host for horror film lovers uh, is Michael McLenn who also is one of those people who's like, I love this. I love that. Like for certain movies. My, my quest for Madeline Deering, and this is, this is like, you know, trying to find the Holy grail, but I need to find a shark movie that she hasn't seen yet. Hasn't seen. I think she said there's some she hasn't seen, uh, but there are some she didn't like. She didn't like 90210 shark attack. And that's, you know, but that's, I mean, that if you like that, Something is obviously wrong with you. <laughs> or Shark Hunter. I mean, I know you yeah. guys love Shark Hunter. Uh yeah. I think I think she wouldn't like that movie either. Hey, speaking know. of which, this summer aren't we doing more Yeah, shark we're gonna be doing more Shark Attack Sundays. Those are coming mm-hmm. out. And we just I gotta I think uh sometime in the spring we'll we'll have to get everybody to start recording one episode uh you know. Um you gotta remind me what my picks are because I forgot. Oh God, I think I I think we have a whole like thankfully a whole message thing there of it, so I I can look back at it. Um, but yeah, so like we're busy. There's a million million projects and stuff. I mean, we're not like we haven't stopped and said you know we're only going to do one podcast a you know a week or something you know or whatever or a month you know we're we're going full on so you're gonna if you go to indiefilmcafe.podbean.com or just look up indie film cafe on any of your pod uh cast stuff you'll see like tons of content um and we have uh tiktoks that are we got a lot of stuff on tiktok still doing uh clips and and things that are up there um so i mean we're we're always constantly busy you know Mm -hmm. with a million million things but that's that's a good thing Right, we don't want to be bored and not have anything to do. I would love you know. to be bored. <laughs> Paul would love to be bored. Uh, you know, uh, we were supposed to do something this weekend, and that that canceled. So Paul was, I think, a little relieved, a little, because I know you're you were excited to sh- do a, do a podcast, but it yeah it was, with our friend yeah yeah it was, was our friend, but unfortunately it didn't work out. Um, uh, but <laughs> you were like. I'm ready, you know, uh, you were ready to go do your yard work. I took advantage. I got my garden planted and today I'm going to finish putting up the netting. And is that, yeah. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Work. You've, you've always constantly got other work to do. That's not podcasting or whatever, you know, yep. Yep, yep, and yep. stuff. 
Um, John, what have what else have you been up to? Um, same stuff, just working on that that film as an actor, ruthless, and just trying to get my other stuff going. So, you know, Axumus three and four and delete and all that. I keep saying that every single month, but <laughs> now it will happen. Uh everybody can contact John, give him money and let him go make that movie. I got the money. That's it's it's just me not doing it. I, I don't know what it is. It's just I'm I'm just not motivated. So mm. I just need, need to sit motivation. down. Motivation. Motivation. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's just it's just easier to go to work and then come home and watch a movie and go to bed. So I mean, yeah. I mean, when you're working uh like a nine to five, well, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? Like a hardcore job like that, you know, it's just like busy you're busy your life is not is not about uh being able to do a lot of other stuff you know this, this bronx bigfoot dvd says that it's the remastered director's cut nice can't wait i know you're so excited about why well, i'm surprised you haven't watched that yet you know i just got it i got it yesterday i know i'm surprised you didn't put it on last night just... Just, no i was too tired i i went out and there was an atheist group that uh, we did Cards Against Humanity, so we all did that. And, oh. and Joe, Joe, Joe Lynn was there and um, a couple other folks that I know, and we just did that. And I didn't get home until about 1030, and I crashed. <laughs> Joe Lynn's been a good, like, special guest mm-hmm. for us. Like, we've been very lucky to have her. Um, and so we're we're going to be busy. Like, we got so much stuff coming up, and um april is uh paul's birthday month so um you know so we're hoping to do something with him on that and i uh, can't remember if i put out a forgotten horror classics for this month or not i know i said i don't think you did but i don't think you sent it to me yet Mm. so yeah i never got one so um hopefully soon you'll uh you know you can send me it and i mean i'll put it up when we can you know it's not being so i never sent you the void I don't think so. What did you send it through? It would have been through uh, Dropbox. I would have been through Dropbox? You didn't get rid of it, did you? No. As no. Jonathan looks up, I got to mention the director of Shock of Dead, and that's Mark Freed. So. Yes, oh, you forgot to mention... Okay. Yeah, I just said the director, and I just realized that that I didn't I mean, say Mark Freed. It's we we usually do end of the month anyway, so if, if I haven't sent it to you, I'll send it to you in a day or two. Yeah, send it into a day or two, and I'll put it up on Thursday. So, oh um, yeah, that means I need to send you my uh, review after midnight, my my last one that I've redone. So, all right. Um. So, interestingly enough, so there's uh the uh as we've just dis- just discussed uh. We've got that going, so he's got the stuff on Thursdays. I got Throwback Thursdays, which I actually have. Season two is, you know, getting finished, and I've already got all of season three already up, you know, and ready for for it to go. So, um, I just, you know, I I think there's only going to be five seasons of that, but that's all my old blog talk radio episodes and stuff some some of them are kind of interesting some of them are cringy for me but like it's sort of good to for me to hear that shit you know like you know like how i was back in the day you know and to know that like things have changed a lot you know sort of thing um but i've i've interviewed a lot of really cool people and um uh and then um yeah, as you said, your reviews after midnight. We're also doing, uh, as I said, we're doing first time watch Fridays, uh, and I've got three more episodes I, uh, to get up in the first of April, from first Friday in April, to uh, about three episodes, and those are going to be just me. After that, that's the tenth episode, then eleventh through twentieth, and and everything else after that will be uh, me and a guest. So. I think John's joining me for one and a bunch of other uh, people have said that they were interested in coming on, you know, and stuff. So that's going to take place for, that's going to take over what used to be 31 days of indie horror. So it's it's still going to be sort of the same, a similar, you know, thing where I'm going to pick a movie from Tubi or whatnot that, you know, we can watch and review. Um, 
And then also we have man eaters and uh, there might not be a man eaters for April. I'm still working on that, but uh, there might be. So don't quote me on that yet. You know, um, aside from that, that's pretty much it. Like that's just what's been going on with this world. I mean, we we're constantly busy, constantly doing stuff. I mean, uh, which is good, you know, um, keep us busy with this so that everybody's got content. Speaking of which, time for me to hit the read. So I will see you guys next time. All right. Uh, bye, Paul. <laughs> All right. Bye. All righty. Uh, later. Well, John, uh, I guess that, that'll wrap it up for this show anyway. Um, but thank you so much for coming on. And if you guys tune in to Blu-ray Hunter, uh, my other channel, uh, yeah, Blu-ray Hunter, my other channel, you'll see our Blu-ray Hunter haul. So uh, that we're actually going to record. Right do that. This. So, do that. Do that. Go check that out. Um, you'll it. see all the crazy stuff that will be out. Uh, that'll be doing twice a month. So um, or not twice a month. Uh, once every two months. Once every two months. Thank you. Like, wait. That and and, and on the last one, you told me to put any Blu-ray that I wanted to. So I have 200 Blu-rays to show. It's going to be a long one. That's what she said. Oh, no. I hope you're joking. I really hope you're joking. We'll find out. We'll find out. Go check out Blue Ranter. Find out if he makes me listen to 200 fucking reviews. All right. Until then, everybody. Bye. Bye.